Well, the most expensive player, sorry, the most expensive defender in the world, Harry Maguire, who crossed from Leicester in the summer of 2019 to Manchester United for 80 million pounds, has finally made up his mind to leave Manchester United. And this is a story that has been brought to you by Al Max Scott, the person who works on talk sport and obviously he has gone ahead and given us his view on harry Maguire, and i think these reasons are valid it reflects back to what i really came out and told you about harry Maguire, that the return of twanze bay a player whose physicality is not doubted his his skills on the ball and obviously his energy and being tenacious obviously put Maguire into the fifth, fifth picking order of Eric Ten Hag and he cannot see himself not play a ball at Manchester United because he's he's at the age where he needs to go on and play a lot to see to it that he really goes ahead to prove the manager of England right again to give him another slot at the Euros because the Euros are happening the next two years don't forget two years from now we are going to be into the Euros that is 2024 and Harry Maguire looks like England is not far away from winning a title he might be chasing in for that from that we are going to talk a little bit of Kobe Mino you know him very well Kobe Mino the new Paul Billy Pogba coming in from the Academy of Manchester United he scored a very good goal when United was was beating sort of was being beaten by Cadiz in Spain I think like a week back he has re he has been called by Eric Ten Hag to start to train with the first team of United. That is an achievement for him. Very young, good player and exciting. Lastly, we are going to discuss about Team Viewer finally parting ways with Manchester United. And what does that mean? How have the Glazers gone ahead to rein this club to empty pockets? And that's why they are putting it on the market. And if at all they had really gone ahead to say no to selling they wouldn't have gone ahead to really manage this club welcome to united matters channel how are you guys and you're watching us from rock and david is my name and don't forget to go in the world bottom corner smash the subscription button for smashing it hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time we upload a video onto this channel now today we've done two stories this is the third one and i believe you guys have enjoyed it we started way off from from Ten Hag excited about the departure of the Glazers. Then the Cody Gapko hijack, Liverpool coming in through to try to get that deal to see to either they get Cody Gapko after Luis Diaz looks like he's injured. And now we are here to talk about the captain of United, Harry Maguire, close to leaving United because of denied playing time by Eric Ten Hag. And the fact is he'll never and never impress the manager. Now, Ali. Max, Mark Coist on Harry Maguire on Talk Sport, he said, I think he will move and I don't think he may move. I don't think he may move. I will go one further and I think he will move. Obviously, Harry Maguire will force himself out of Manchester United. However much is he's on a long contract of close to how many years left? He signed six years at Manchester United, meaning that his contract is expiring in 2025. Let me hope there is no one more optional year. Meaning that he's still here for some two and a half years. But Ten Hag looks like he is not interested in this player anymore because he can't fit the right profile of a central defender that he has gone ahead to go on and pick in very many games and he has disappointed him. To an extent that he is even for the Fido when Victor Linderov is back. The only way he's that Fido is when Victor Linderov is injured, but in the picture of Victor Linderov, Harry Maguire is is valued next to Linderov, and obviously he has gone ahead to go on and do the needful to see to make up his mind. And this is Mark Ali McCoyst coming out and really revealing to us that Maguire will leave Manchester United. He said again, Maguire isn't going to hang around. I don't think there are any guarantees that he's going. He's going back into Manchester United team, not in front of Varane and Lisandro Martinez. So, this is evident that whenever Lisandro Martinez and Varane are present, Harry Maguire can't make it to the starting eleven of Manchester United. And that is proven. And every attribute that Eric Ten Hag has considered to put these two ahead of Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire has nothing to do about it. Harry Maguire can't increase his speed. Harry Maguire can't elevate his talent. Harry Maguire can't elevate his game reading. That's it. 
those three are really like inbuilt because that is what we call common sense. Game reading is common sense, and common sense is not common. That's why you see to it that there are defenders that have played for Everton for very many years and they fail to cross to bigger teams. Harry Maguire was a player that Jose Mourinho liked, uh, Pep Guardiola liked him, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got him at 80 million pounds from Leicester City. I believe, to me, if you were a team like Manchester United, you wouldn't have gone into a player like Harry Maguire because he doesn't feel he doesn't fit the long term the long term philosophy. And this shows you how ill minded the sporting director of United or technical director was to go in and allow that deal to happen. Why? Getting in Harry Maguire at fifty million pounds sorry at eighty million pounds was really a bad deal. He's slow. He is not good at game reading. And he collides a lot with his fellow defenders. His game reading is poor. Remember by then, <coughs> Ruben Diaz, one of the best defenders in the league at Man City, was still available at just 60 million euros at, I think was playing at FC Porto or Benefica, one of those two teams. That's where he was. I believe if we had a very good sporting director, I would have said, no, let's not go in for Harry Maguire. Let's go in for Ruben Diaz. That's it. Ruben Diaz is a far much better defender than Harry Maguire and came in for for 28 million pounds less. So I believe that was a very bad scouting and I don't believe United will go ahead and really repeat that mistake because a player of the quality of Harry Maguire is nowhere near the future of United and the future of defending doesn't, doesn't accommodate players like Harry Maguire because teams are going to be playing a high line. And obviously, they're not going to be playing a low block because at the World Cup, he looked very well for the England national team because England was playing a low block and teams were not committing a lot into spaces. But when you look at teams in the Premier League and La Liga, French League One, um, Serie A, they play high line. That what make, that's what makes you a big team. You have to play high line and press your opponent in his half to see to it that you make him hard to go on and play. And obviously hurt him when you get that ball because when you're pressing your opponent in his half that means when he loses that ball in just a nick of time or a blink of an eye you are into his 18 yards box area and boom into the back of the head you score that goal but at the world cup things have been different even at the euros things were different not as they were at the world cup because these are only seven games that you have to play if i told you win all of them you win the trophy seven games but the league has close to 38 games. When you look at the European games, United can play average of 10 games in there for you, making those 48. Carabao Cup, we can play like three, three or four on average. Those are 52. Getting what we call the FA Cup, we can play like five, like four, almost 60 games that we can play a season. So seven games a player can look good but can he be consistent that's where that's why you seem to eat that a player is regarded and voted the best according to his performance in the league because the league calls for consistency than the world cup the beauty of the world cup is simple it goes in to bring in it goes in to bring in it goes in to happen in four years in four years time that's why it has a lot of a lot of vibe with it. It comes with a lot of happiness and eagerness and readiness. Reason being, it's going to come back in the next four years. But the league, Champions League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, they are played every season. So no player is going to come out and really defend Harry Maguire. All no one is going to come out and defend Harry Maguire on this because I believe he deserves to leave the club. Reason being, he is not in the right books of Eric Ten Hag. He can't fit the profile of a defender that Ten Hag wants. Then he couldn't let us know that straight away off the top of my head, I would say he's, I would say he's good enough for Spurs. Arsenal? Question mark. Maybe not this moment in time, but he has been one of England's best players at the World Cup. But even the manager of England came out and said the reason as to why Harry Maguire looks better at the English Northern team than how he looks at at Manchester United is they play in a system that favors him and makes him look good. That's it. England does not play high line. They don't play high line. That's it. You get they don't play high line. Under the World Cup, few teams have played a high line. 
most of the teams have been playing a low block, but they try to build that ball through the midfield and try to capitalize on moments. That's what the World Cup has been all about. That's why you saw teams like Spain, who came into top football, they failed to go on to beat teams like Morocco. Do you know why? They couldn't go past Morocco because teams that have won the World Cup recently, 2014, 2018, have been playing a low block. The same applies to Germany. That's how they beat Argentina in the final. I think the last team that really played total football and really won was Spain. It was Spain. You get? They attacked themselves. That was the best final I last saw with my eyes. Netherlands versus Spain in South Africa 2010. That was one to remember. But coming out and saying it's good for Spurs, yes, because Spurs plays with the back three. Good at Arsenal, I doubt. Arsenal plays a high line. And he can't, ma he can't match the pace of um, Gabriel Magales and, uh, and Saliba. You get? That's why United even doesn't see him as the third feed at the club. <laughs> He's seen as the fourth feed at the club when the rest of the players are fit. And the coming in of Twanze Bay puts him out exactly out of the equation and he's going to go down to the fifth fiddle. That's it. And if I told Ten Hag happens to go in the summer and brings in another center for another center back, Harry Maguire will be sixth fiddle at Manchester United, meaning that his chances will be narrowed to zero of appearing in a shot of United playing on the field of play. Though Ten Hag came out and told us that he really believes Harry Maguire will come on and really mirror the form he was with at the World Cup and bring it to what we call the Premier League, something that is hard for him because these are two different things altogether. The players are different, you get? It's very hard to face a player twice or thrice in a season at the World Cup. This time round, you can face a player that can destroy you thrice. You can face the player in the FA Cup in the season, you face him twice, especially in the Premier League. Then Carabao Cup, you can face him. You can face him in you can face him in the Champions League. So very many avenues are said for you to call for your consistency. And if at all it's not there, then you're supposed to leave the club. And I believe this guy, known as Al Makoist, is really right on Harry Maguire. He's not going to hang on at Manchester United. He will leave the club because he can't handle the embarrassment. To him, it's an embarrassment, but obviously, this is a fact that Ten Hag has brought in at the club. He gives you the chance. When you fail to utilize your chance, he gets someone else. Harry Maguire won't come out and say Ten Hag never gave him a chance. Two games played for Manchester United. One we lost 2-1. Obviously, was responsible for those two goals. That of Brentford, we lost 4-0. We couldn't capitalize and really get back. What the manager did was to get Luke Shaw out of the team, replaced him with Malaysia, Harry Maguire out, brought in Veran and Lisandro Martinez, and obviously the rest of the team remained almost the same. And when that back four really looked watertight, he went ahead to win games. So, with Harry Maguire, it's rare for us to win a game. That's it. Because the manager cannot come out and portray his system very, very well because Harry Maguire is really a threat to us as United. We are not secure. You get? That's why you pray to it that Lisandro Martinez and Viran come out very, very fit. And wait for the game of Burnley. I've seen the center forward of Burnley. He's really fast. The game we're going to play in the Carabao Cup, it's going to be Harry Maguire versus Burnley. So, he's returning at the club on Monday. I believe he's going to take part in the game we're going to play on Wednesday. So let's wait and see what's going to happen in there at the United game versus Burnley. But obviously, it does not look good for Harry Maguire. Obviously, he's set to leave Manchester United because he has no future in the plans of Eric Ten Hag. Now, Team Viewer has finally come out and parted ways with Manchester United. A mutual agreement has been reached between these two teams. And... We no longer have a shirt sponsor. That's it. Simon Stone was the first to come out and really reveal this before the club even issued a statement that Team Viewer and Manchester United have reached an agreement which sees United getting back their rights for their front of shirt sponsorship. That is Simon Stone. He was the first to come out and report this story. Then guess what? I think Donka, is it James Donka for the Telegraph? United correspondent 
came out and said Manchester United said sponsorship with Team Viewer is ending early. That's it because they had some other two years to go, I think, to go on and really be the shared sponsors of United, but it has really left. The club statement read, Manchester United will be taking the opportunity to commence a focused sales process for a new shared front partner. Team Viewer will remain shared sponsor until new one formed. Then Samuel Lucas of the Manchester Evening News posted and said, Team Viewers shared sponsorship of Manchester United to end early. Statement says Manchester United shall have an option to buy back the rights to the club's shut front sponsorship. United will be taking the opportunity to commence a focused sales process for a new shut front partner. That is what Samuel Lucas is going to hear to let us know. But all this has been caused by the Glazers. No sponsor would like to be sponsoring a team that has fans that go on and demonstrate. That led to the cancelling of an entire game. Who brought that? The Glazers going out to start to negotiate a deal to go into the Super League when they've not involved the fans because of the money they're expecting close to 2.3 billion pounds to be given to them after a hefty a hefty deal of close to 10 billion was up there for grabs for teams like Manchester United, Real Madrid and Barcelona fans demonstrated the game of Liverpool was really off. Then after that, <coughs> fans have kept on demonstrating and they've gone ahead to demonstrations on Twitter attacking Team Viewer. Obviously, Team Viewer, like a shared sponsor, don't want to have that. They want to be having positivity and positive vibe at the club. But right now, what's happening at Manchester United, it's not all rosy. It's really stinking and don't expect sponsors that are really having reputable marketers to come out and stick to come out and stick out to teams like those. So I believe it's really stinking for a team which goes by the names of Manchester United. That's why Team Viewer has really decided to go on and leave the club. But United are really going to be having the Team Viewer still on their shirts until they find a new shirt sponsor but i believe it's going to take some time to get a new shirt sponsor the glazers can't go on to agree any deal right now involving man at manchester united do you know why they are going to sell the club and you never know if apple comes in through and takes it over maybe spotify maybe amazon they might want to have amazon all apple as the shirt sponsors of united and they can use that as an avenue to go on and pump money into the club you know what man city did they got money in very many ways they first got the naming rights of the stadium to it had stadium it was the city of manchester stadium and that costed 500 million pounds that was paid to man city then they had to go on and cancel the deal they had with their sponsor when it elapsed and they brought in etihad so it had pumped in money that is helping man city to go on and do the needful so i believe the club is really having a very good day Sorry, a very bad day because the Glazers have really put us to this level and we've been drained to a level that no team would love to be put at. So that's why the Glazers have brought at Manchester United. Team viewers gone. You get? And this is where I thank God. You see, we've been calling for this to happen and obviously it has happened. We have been telling the fans of United that if we want to kick the Glazers out, empty that all close all the tunnels that all the ways that have been pumping in money at Manchester United. Now, Team Viewer is one of those that has been pumping in money for the club and obviously it's pulling out. You get? So, let's wait and see what's going to happen but I believe the new owners are going to come in, inject in money, negotiate better deals for United and put us in a better position. Now, last I want to talk about Kobe Maino. If you watch the game of United where we lost to Cadiz, to that dark tall guy who scored the second goal against against Cadiz is called Kobe Maino. I've been watching him a lot in the reserve team all hundred ones of Manchester United. His real revelation Ten Hag has finally granted him a chance to train with the senior team of United because of his capability and obviously he plays like Paul Lebede Pogba. He is really great. His intensity is great. These boys are blessed. You see, all these players come with the academy of Manchester United. They are blessed because we've lost very many generations of talented players from the academy by not having a very good top manager who is good at ushering 
in young talent and managing it into the first 11. But this time round, these boys are really having it. Eric Ten Hag is really there. The likes of Iqbal, Savage, Ganacho has made his announcement in the top team. That is really one of the things that is encouraging the likes of Savage, Maino, and very many others to work hard because they know that if you really show it that the manager is interested in you, then you go in and really start for the club. So that's what I had for you. Tell me what to think about Maguire set to leave Manchester United. Team viewer out of United. We don't have a shirt sponsor, but we are going to be keeping them onto the top, onto the front of the shirt until we get a new viewer, sorry, a new shirt sponsor then. What do you think about Kobe Mino? Ten Hag calling him at the club to go on and do the needful to train with the first team because a lot of potential has been portrayed by this guy when they were in the warm winter training in Spain. Thank you for watching in. Last video of the day. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And obviously, don't forget to say a prayer before you go to bed. Rock and David is my name. I'm out. May the metal God watch you abundantly and I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm out.